The situation between Russia and Ukraine is heating up severely, and it's looking like the only likely ending to this story is war. So in my previous video, I walked through all of the historical context and events that led up to what we're seeing today. I definitely encourage you, if you did not already, to go back and watch that because it definitely provides some valuable information for you to be aware of to understand this current situation fully. So everyone's aware of this now, but as we previously discussed, Russia had started massing over 100,000 troops on the Russia-Ukrainian border, which isn't something you just do for fun. That is a clear indication of some sort of invasion plan. So the response by the United States and the Biden administration was we don't want to go to direct war with Russia but we will send weapons and other resources to Ukraine, as well as additional troops and military resources to the Eastern European countries that are a part of NATO. And as I outlined in that previous video, a bunch of people are trying to make it out, like the United States just really wants to go to war, and so they're overreacting to this to make that happen. But as I hoped I proved to you guys, that's not the case. And while seemingly on most things, I have issues with the United States, their foreign policy, and the way that they conduct their business across the world. In this situation, I told you, I actually think they were doing most things correctly help defend Ukraine in every way possible that's not direct military involvement and support the other NATO countries. Great. Well, as we heard from a lot of people, no, everyone's overreacting. It's not actually going to be a war. Putin's being completely reasonable. Clearly, those people were wrong because now we're seeing a huge escalation in the conflict with Putin coming out and giving a speech recognizing these two regions of Ukraine that proclaim to be independent republics and they're clearly Russian backed. And so Putin's saying those are not a part of Ukraine. And the reason he did that was to set up his next step, which as we just found out, he's sending peace keeping troops into those regions without their permission. It doesn't matter if you proclaim those regions to be not a part of Ukraine. And it also doesn't matter if you call your troops peacekeeping troops, it's still an invasion. And there have been reports that in this Donbass region, there's shelling going on between separatist forces that are the ones calling themselves independent of Ukraine and Ukrainian forces. And of course, if he couldn't be any more clear with his intentions, in that same speech, Putin called Ukraine a part of Russia, which is exactly what you would do before you're about to try to take over that territory. And listen, I don't want this show to be petty and it just constantly be me responding to other people's bad opinions. But let me tell you, I am so sick of hearing, especially people on the left for some reason, frame every single one of these conversations as if the United States is somehow the bad guy. Listen, as I'll say a million times, the United States has done and will do and is currently doing a bunch of bad things across the world and that's terrible and we should hold them accountable. But right now the focus is a world leader of a country that has a history of taking territory that isn't theirs is showing every single sign of being intent on taking over a country that isn't theirs. That is the concern. I just was watching a show and literally the whole conversation in response to these new very provocative actions by Putin was all about how, oh yeah, see people in Washington just really are beating the war drums and they just really want to go to war and that's why all this is happening. Nobody caused Putin to put thousands of troops on his border and then call a part of Ukraine independent and then call the entire Ukraine a part of Russia and then send troops into Ukraine. Nobody forced them to do that. We can have a thousand conversations about the wrongdoing of Western countries and the United States at a later date, but right now the focus should be Russia's imperialist actions that they're taking at this very moment. Yes, the United States is an imperialist power as well. But right now, what we're watching is Russia trying to take territory that is rightfully already a part of a country. So please, you're not somehow more on the left by finding a way in every single situation, no matter the circumstances, to blame the United States and our very broken government for the wrong things that are happening. And even in the face of literally Putin sending troops into Ukraine, Biden is still saying in a video I'm about to show you that the only actions we're taking are defensive and we're not going to send military military troops to Ukraine. If we wanted to start a war, now would be the time to make that happen. But Biden could not be more clear that he does not want to go into direct military conflict with Russia. And I'm also seeing people cite only Russian media whenever talking about what's going on in the situation. And they're like, see, these are the facts. Ukraine started all of this. That's what Russian media says. Please get your head out of your I don't swear on the show, but there are also reports that shots have been fired on the Russian-Ukrainian border, which is insane that this is actually all going down. And again, I don't want to just be addressing other people's arguments, but let me hit a few more. To the people saying, we have to figure this out diplomatically. What do you think we've been trying to do this whole time? Do you pay attention to how passive the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, has been? 
Biden, other Western leaders. Biden just came out and said he would meet with Vladimir Putin. His only stipulation was that Putin doesn't invade Ukraine before they have that meeting, which is a pretty reasonable prerequisite. I literally hear people saying, see, they're just jumping right to military action, not taking any time to try diplomacy. Have you considered that Putin is not interested in diplomacy? He's been pressed to give his demands, but it has not been clear at all. And I'll just be clear before we move on. This video is a follow-up video to my last one, just giving you updates and making sure you're in the know about these current developments. This is not me laying out all the content of the situation because like I said I already did that so if you're somebody who wants to criticize me about points that I left out of this video go watch the other one first and then type out your angry comments about whatever you want to so as I mentioned shots have been fired on the border Putin came out and gave that speech where he recognized these two regions of Ukraine as independent he restated his position that Ukraine is part of Russia and then is sending troops into Ukraine to those Russian backed regions that are calling themselves independent republics and there is a long history of Russia backing these groups in Ukraine that are Russian loyalists to create these uprisings so that Putin can have an excuse to do exactly what he's doing right now. So this is by no means organic. This is two regions that for years have been backed by Putin and Russia militarily and financially. And now Putin's using that as an excuse to go into Ukraine. In response to this, Biden came out and gave a speech. Let's look at some of the important parts of that. Yesterday, Vladimir Putin recognized two regions of Ukraine as independent states. And he bizarrely asserted that these regions are no longer part of Ukraine and their sovereign territory. To put it simply, Russia just announced that it is carving out a big chunk of Ukraine. Last night, Putin authorized Russian forces to deploy into the region, these regions. He's setting up a rationale to take more territory by force, in my view. And if we listened to his speech last night, and many of you did, I know, he's, uh, he's setting up a rationale to go much further. This is the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, as he indicated and asked permission to be able to do from his Duma. So today, I'm announcing the first tranche of sanctions to impose costs on Russia in response to their actions yesterday. These have been closely coordinated with our allies and partners and will continue to escalate sanctions if Russia escalates. We're implementing full blocking sanctions on two large Russian financial institutions. VEB and their military bank. We're implementing comprehensive sanctions on Russian sovereign debt. That means we've cut off Russia's government from Western financing. It can no longer raise money from the West and cannot trade in its new debt on our markets or European markets either. Starting tomorrow and continuing in the days ahead, we'll also impose sanctions on Russia's elites and their family members. They share in the corrupt gains of the Kremlin policies and should share in the pain as well. And because of Russia's actions, we've worked with Germany to ensure Nord Stream 2 will not, as I promised, will not move forward. We still believe that Russia is poised to go much further in launching a massive military attack against Ukraine. Hope I'm wrong about that. Hope we're wrong about that. But Russia has only escalated its threat against the rest of Ukrainian territory, including major cities and including the capital city of Kyiv. So Biden and his officials are now using the word invasion, which is a heavy and impacting word to be using. I agree with using it, but that's why I now believe that war is inevitable. I think it's just almost impossible to put together all these variables, all the different moves that Putin has made in the last number of months and not see the result on the other side of the equation being a full scale invasion. Now the world's a crazy place, so by some miracle, it could end up not happening, but all of what we're seeing now is not making that look likely. I think Biden's decision to support Germany's move to halting the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is very good because that would have a lot of economic effects and then also sanctioning a number of russian financial institutions as well as russian oligarchs is definitely the right move the reason i like it is it puts the financial strain on the people in power and less so the everyday Russian. Because a lot of times these sanctions just end up hurting and often starving the citizens of the country, but a lot of times the leaders don't really care about that. And so by using these targeted sanctions, we're able to put the strain on the right people without harming all the innocent ones. Again, I'll state because people are obsessed with calling everyone warmongers, I don't want the United States to go to war, but I absolutely agree with Biden doing anything he can to support Ukraine and keep Russia from literally taking 
taking over a territory that's not theirs. Putin has clearly been salivating over the idea for a long time of taking over Ukraine. And so I'm personally really concerned and don't know what the global community should do if Russia ends up fully invading Ukraine. I mean, if they're in a war with one another, what are we just gonna sit back and watch and only use sanctions? I don't know, this is crazy. So of course, I'll keep you guys updated. If I get any more information, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, let's hope that by some miracle, I'm reading the situation wrong and this doesn't end up in a war. Here's what else you need to know today. The three men who murdered Ahmad Arbery are found guilty of hate crimes in the federal hate crime trial, which adds life sentences to their current sentences that they received in their previous murder trials. The Supreme Court said it would not take up Donald Trump's case that attempted to prevent White House documents from being disclosed to the January 6th committee, which was his last chance, so now he has to turn them over. U.S. soccer reaches a $24 million agreement with the U.S. women's national team over the discrimination lawsuit that had gone on between them for years. Be well, everybody.